When it comes to origami, there's space for everyone to learn. From beginners like me, who learn to make simple things in grade school, to avid enthusiasts and origami artists like Matthew Wong. Today is my first proper introduction to origami paper folding, so what are we going to make today? Yeah, we are going to make a traditional crane. Make sure the point is at the center crease. Got it. We have the, uh, four long branches, and you can recognize that it's a scissors. I'm Great. seeing the beginnings of the crane. Oh, yeah, there yeah, it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. <gasps> wow, I made that all from a single piece of paper to create this beautiful 3D object. That magic of seeing my crane come to life is what has captured the imagination of researchers around the world. Now, the study of these seemingly straightforward folds are yielding results well beyond our own planet. This one looks really cool. This yeah, that's why it's like, oh. like... Oh, other way, other way. Uh, like, oh, just turn the other way. Our goal is to make an excellent telescope. And in the end, this excellent telescope is still uh, going to have much of the original origami that will not only be embedded in it, but it will be obvious. Thanks. All right, we'll open. Here we go. At Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah, a collaboration is unfolding. We're working on a design with NASA and Penn State and with uh, MMA Design and Company on a, a new LiDAR telescope, something that can do remote sensing. The challenge? To develop a light detection and radar, or LIDAR, telescope larger than the ones currently used in space today, but smaller in its deployable form. Okay, so currently there's a, a mission on orbit around the Earth called ISAT-2, and it uses a beryllium telescope, and that telescope is roughly a cubic meter. We'd rather have the whole satellite be smaller than just the telescope is on that mission. It's making great measurements, but it was roughly the size of a refrigerator. And we're really targeting with this next kind of round of development to be able to fit uh, the satellite um, in about the size of a large suitcase. Though satellites using LiDAR technology have been in orbit for more than two decades, the size of these satellites and corresponding telescopes have stayed relatively similar. Now, to find a solution, engineers at BYU are turning to art. So early on in our work, we needed to understand more about origami and the patterns that are out there. And there's a subfield of origami called action origami, and that is origami that moves. So what we found is, is these origami artists have discovered new ways of doing creative uh, motions from a single sheet of paper and fold it into some complex shapes. So a lot of our research has been, how do we take this very inspiring kind of uh, motions and be able to translate that into other materials that are thicker, that don't crease, and have all these, these other issues. Unlike traditional origami, the designs being tested here often go beyond folding using cuts, hinges, and magnets. We found those fundamental mechanisms that were there and that we could mathematically model and, and then we could also put those together and recreate uh, the origami systems, but then also combine them in ways that hadn't been combined before. This is becoming kind of a, a hardware catalog, if you will, of showing different ways of getting that folding motion, but in things that uh, are not paper and doing it so they don't break. We use the origami for inspiration. When we get done and other materials and with with what we call surrogate folds to replace the creases, then it might not even look like origami anymore. Then we've engineered it to be able to create that, the function that's needed and the application that then looks different. And, but yet, without the origami, the final device uh, couldn't, have, couldn't have resulted. While origami has already influenced space technology innovations like NASA's James Webb Telescope and Starshade, applying it to a space instrument using LiDAR technology is new. 
It's going to be a, a pretty big, what may be actually the largest LIDAR telescope ever deployed in space. Here, precision is key. If we're doing LIDAR optical telescopes, then we need the surface to be in the right place to within a fraction of a micron. And that's a challenge for the engineering that lies wholly outside the folding. But the specific folding pattern that we adopt may strongly affect the accuracy of the surface that we get when it's deployed. Much like how bats can use sound and echolocation to paint a detailed physical map, LIDAR telescopes in space use light to send laser pulses down to Earth. The telescope then takes the bounce back of the laser beam to measure things like distance, depth, and even gases like carbon dioxide and methane. But in order for the lasers to be measured properly, the telescope's receiving lenses need to be completely flat. As a researcher, I think about our applications and I might sketch something or design something, a model on a computer, and then I will go and maybe 3D print it, or I'll, if it's promising, I'll cut it out of metal and see how well that works. And so I go through a lot of these little stages to try and produce something that eventually is reliable and durable and performs the way that I want it to. The team is currently in their first year of a three-year project with the goal to have a lab-based proof of concept by 2026. For NASA, the ability to deploy telescopes in smaller packages means more room on board for additional telescopes per rocket launch. There are a lot of things that only LiDAR instruments can do. And, the, and one of the biggest obstacles is cost. So if we can bring the cost down, we can fly more of the same type of instrument to get uh, coverage. There's a, a, a big push for faster return times, for, for more overall coverage, more real-time data. And whether it's data that creates better maps to predict future flood zones, or the changing levels of emissions in our environment, LiDAR tech telescopes provide information that is otherwise unattainable. One of the really exciting and rewarding things is to be part of this kind of snowball effect, right? Where you're early on and you see it continue to grow from this idea of like, really, what are you doing? To really seeing things come together and realize that it's just the beginning. It's a wonderful experience and especially doing this with these bright students and we're able to uh, to see their you know, eyes light up and them get excited about these things and realizing, hey, I'm gonna, we're doing things that can make a difference in the world.